Welcome back to Sahara TV. This is the second part of our Skype call segment. Now, we've been talking about Stella and the crisis of governance that is facing the government of Jonathan as a result of the expose on the purchase of two vehicles by her ministry for uh, the transportation of uh, dignitaries and herself. Uh, we also touched on the issue of the national conference and we asked the question if people who do not believe in Nigeria the way it is currently constituted and are recommending or are pushing for the break of, Ni of Nigeria, whether they should be part of that conference. Uh, but we're going to start the second part with a discussion on MEND and the recent kidnapping of, um, of U.S. sellers. Uh, on the coast of Nigeria. So we want to ask if this is an escalation of the problems that has been going on in the Niger Delta and what that will mean for Nigerians and Nigeria as a country uh, in the perception of international community. So joining us to discuss this will be Niyi in Canada, uh, Yaya in uh, Malaysia, uh, Kali in Canada. But we are going to start a discussion with Comrade Samuel uh, Yembara, who uh, is in Wari, Nigeria. He said that he uh, was a victim of kidnapping in Nigeria. So uh, let's hear uh, a comrade's story. Uh, comrade Samuel, welcome to Sahara TV. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I understand that you are in Wari, is that correct? Okay, so what happened? Can you briefly tell us your story? What happened to you? Uh, I think I've told my story before on this uh, uh, channel. So I was thinking it's the main issue we are going to address. I All right. Uh, uh, it was an attempted kidnap. Anyway, it was not a successful. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, so let's talk about it's men. No longer, it's no longer newsworthy. Okay, all right. I didn't understand that. I wasn't told. Okay, let's talk about MEND and uh, what happened. You are in Nigeria, and you are yeah. within the Niger Delta region. Um, what What is your take? I'm that I was, Sorry? I'm beside that I was, deep, I was very much involved in the Niger Delta struggle. Okay, so what is going on? Tell us the story. What do you know? What is going on? Uh, what's going on is that the Niger Delta struggle, just before the team escalates into a real civil war, they have to push for amnesty. That's the way to save the communities in that area and including the urban areas and the oil industries itself. So the amnesty was uh, accepted by some uh, main commanders. But it's in this that there are some among them who did not uh, quite agree with the settlement. Because the government did not put anything forward that, uh, okay, we are giving you both amnesty. We'll have to rehabilitate your, your poor soldiers and all that. But there was nothing to give back to say, okay, this is what we are giving back to your communities. So the audience just sent that on individuals. You understand what I mean? Mm. So it didn't go, go, go down well with some people in men. So uh, the, during those times, I have to push again for a 10% concession, a uh, stake on the oil uh, uh, the oil corporation be given to the communities. And it was approved. All these were done, all these things were done under the assistance of the United States. You see, so when the after the amnesty when the amnesty really commenced, when they commenced the implementation of the amnesty, I was even excluded. But for one reason, I acted independently of men, so I'm not a member of men. And number two, I'm not a member of the usual ethnic nationality, which uh, constitutes men and uh, which is also the president's uh, ethnic nationality. So men have been making uh, uh, queries over time, and uh, I think this is just an escalation. All other previous uh, abductions in the high sea uh, piracy, but this one is really men, and they claim their uh, mm. responsibility. Mm. So, 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 right, uh, the other so for people who are who are con watching, they will be wondering if this is happening when Jonathan is president, and when people f thought that. Um, he's taking care of uh, the, the needs of the uh, militants there. What will happen when he's no yeah. longer the president? Uh, when, when he's no longer the president, um, the, he, he could return back to business as usual. The, the same conflict because the issue was not, uh, not properly uh, resolved. And you see how Oka came into the whole matter. You see, because the issue is not properly resolved. 
Mm. The truth is that I have respect for the president. But he has a kind of um, attitude. Uh, once he doesn't uh, want you, he doesn't want you. And that could be really, really the problem. You understand? Mm. They, they, we should have a situation where everybody will be caught together. Even if you see somebody as an enemy, call him to the table. Everybody talk. There will be peace all over the place. Mm. It's very easy to accomplish this. Mm. And it pays me if the international community cannot see that this is the problem. And they begin to give all the support to the president. Definitely the other people will feel uh, uh, to, uh, be sure of the same I don't know why you're getting my picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, comrade, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Um, are you uh, people over there? Are they uh, concerned that by kidnapping American Americans that they might invite American uh, special forces? Uh, that even to the point that you may have drones uh, dropping bombs over there very soon. The people, here are not, the people here are not concerned about that. And then, to me, I don't think it is targeted against America. But America has been very helpful to the region, uh, to the best of their ability. So I believe they could still have done more, but it's just on the president to sit out. You see people in the United States are not just the ethnic nationality. You see, you are saying, okay, now the only thing is United States that struggle was tribalized. I don't belong to the ethnic nationality, but I play the critical role. Of all the six goals you scored in my dad, that I scored a hat trick, but I didn't get anything. Mm. This is humiliation I got in there. It ought not to be so. Mm. So they are not really uh, thinking of drones and all that. I don't think it's targeted like against America. They could have done any other citizen. Mm. Uh -huh. So definitely it is an easy matter because this is something which is the ethnic nationality of the president through his contacts. I think those uh, uh, adopted America to relief. Now, comrade, let me let me ask you. I'm getting the feeling that okay, so there is no satisfaction with the way the president is handling the issues over there. Uh, are the people down there thinking about going to the national conference to press for their demands or whatever they want? Is that an option? Uh, yes, but I think men did not support the national conference. I'm not able to assess the reason why. So yes, people are still preparing to go for the conference. Incidentally, I was one of those who government to organize the conference. As a matter of fact, um, I can say I have defended the Nigerian constitution more than any Nigerian at home and in diaspora, but not given any recognition. So because of that, I will not participate in this uh, national conference. Otherwise, I have three kill ideas that have made you to succeed. And I'll be treated as a slave. At the end of the day, the president is oppressing me. At the end of the day, I work hard, he takes the credit. Nobody hears my name. I cannot continue to do that. Mm. So people are preparing to go anywhere, but I don't think they'll be able to achieve much. Okay. All right. Stay with us. Okay. Let's get other people involved in this discussion. Uh, Ni in Canada. Ni, welcome to Sahara TV. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, tell me what what is your take on this uh, action by men? Um, do you think it's an escalation, and what does that do for Nigeria, uh, our image, and everything? To be candid kind of with you, uh, this is a completely unnecessary action by men. You know, I think Nigerians are tired of hearing about men, these men, that, and we we, could, we can't even say whether this group of people who actually carried out this act, whether they are genuine men members or they are actually a bunch of criminals at this point. This is a totally unnecessary attention to our country. I think we've had enough of all this, um, you know, we underst I understand their plight, I understand, I've been to that region before, and I was shocked, you know, to see a lot of the way people lived in that region. However, I think we've made certain progress that we can only keep building on from this point. Mm -hmm. We can't find ourselves going, we've taken several steps forward, and then now we're basically jumping back to the dark days of, you know, of uh, militancy and so on. It's, it, 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 there has to be an end, mm -hmm. you know? You know, and this is a country, they should, you know, people should understand that Nigeria is a country, you know, made up of so many ethnic groups. It's, it's fortunate, you know, unfortunately, the Niger Delta right now, of course, enjoys the privilege of a very oil-rich region, which is fine. God created that way. But back in the days, there was the time of the Granite Pyramid, which Nigeria benefited from, too. You okay. Know? Okay. Let, let me let me let me hold, hold on. Okay, I'll come back to you. Let me go to yeah 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 yeah. What is your take on this situation in in the Niger Delta area and the action of made men? 
Mm. Actually, I condemn the issue and I see it as a useless and irresponsible act because kidnapping Americans will do nothing. With, it will only cause harm and it will only disturb. Oh, from another point of view, I also see it like as a distraction from the situation we are also in. Because if you if you realize we are also in many probes, all these militancy, all these problems, so they, it's maybe like to de, to, de, to to drive our attention to something different, mm. which we know that it will never happen. Kidnapping Americans will add nothing, will do nothing to our to our system. Mm. Actually, we have many problems, way more, way more, and maybe bigger than that. Mm. Because America will not even listen or jump into trouble with us because they know we are too small for that. Actually. Now let me ask That's you. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying. I know. I know you. Are, you. Are, you talked about in the last segment about the situation in Medugri and and the whole area. So how how does this these two incidents, uh, these two things play out? How do you see it in in the whole frame of the country in terms of um, up there in the north there is problem, uh, down there in the south there is problem, and uh, if if you are uh, if you are the person running the country, does that give you any room to actually breathe and do something? Actually, I see it like it's a plot, maybe by opposition or someone to disturb the whole nation because it's like some disturbing people here while people while people attention are heading it go back to there. Mm. And that's how it's all just to ruin the whole nation. And mm. we don't know who is it, and we just play that they just fail because their mission is they don't have any target, no Muslim, no Christian. Mm. It's all it affects anybody. So mm. it's just a plot. It's not religious, really it's just from a particular group of people. Mm. And actually <laughs> no any solution. We just have to wait because they are they are just anonymous people. Nobody knows them. Mm. All right. Uh let me go to Canada. Call in Canada. So men is uh is uh, flexing their muscles again and what do you think is going on? I'm, I'm yet to get, uh, you know, to craft like the real gist of. Well, well, there was a one. ship, an American ship, the cargo ship that was yeah. um, they they uh, intercepted or boarded the ship and they they kidnapped two of two American sailors, and uh, obviously, you know, they they there will be a move to free them, and then what does that mean for the country? And do you think it's an escalation or is it just uh, another incident? Uh, it, 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 uh, this this showing us that uh, you know. It's escalating to another level. If, if I'm right and I stand to be corrected, I don't know whether this is the same as amnesty, too, right? Yeah, it's the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you, you see now, you see what is going on. So are they, wait, are we still giving them that amnesty? Those are the questions we're not asking. And uh, what, what do they actually want? Because I heard they're collecting about $40 million, if I'm right or wrong. Mm, mm, but mm. if these people are still collecting this money and they, they're still going to demand ransom for these people, then it shows you where the country is going to. So. You, you can imagine if Boko Haram also accepted their own uh, amnesty, and this is this is really funny. I, I can't. Aside the Kubo should to come to come and answer some questions mm. because I, I think he's the one in charge of that group. If I'm right. Mm -hmm. All right, let me go to Felix. Felix, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. So, what, what is your take? What do you think is uh, is going on here? Um, are we seeing the collapse of the amnesty, or is this just another um, bump on the road to to peace? Yeah. Obviously, my humble opinion. I think the whole thing about um, amnesty won't really start the test of time. If you look at everything clearly, you see that everything was shabbily done. Now, uh, if you go to the Niger Delta, how about um, other unemployed graduates that are not militants? So what happens to them? Mm -hmm. You know, you pay huge money to some set of criminals. Sorry to use that word, but that's the way I look at it. And then there are other responsible people that have been going through a lot too. You just ignore them because they are not making noise. So I think the whole thing about amnesty will not stand. In, I think what we are actually doing in Nigeria is that we are building uh, militants. We are building a lot of people. We are building a group of people. Because I've been out of the country for a while, but I heard a lot of these guys move around freely with guns and all that. You know, so what are we That's trying to do? What we are doing is that politicians are just building you know, people that they are going to use in the nearest future. And then when they are done using them, they dump them. I think we should all condemn the whole issue about kidnapping. 
a, a criminal act, and it should be looked at in that way. Mm. That's my opinion. Okay, let me go back to Warren. See, Samuel, are you still with us? Comrade, okay. Now, now, comrade, you can hear the opinion of people who are away, far away from where you are. And, and it's not always uh, the way you see it if you are down there. People don't have this kind of feeling that this is a just cause and that, that you know, people tend to think that a, lot has, that a lot have been done, including the amnesty and the money being paid. They wonder why is it that there continues to be uh, problems over there. What, what, what do you say to those people who do not really um, understand why things should continue to be in the way, the way they are? Falls squarely to the president. Like even in my case, take for example, despite being uh, the most successful agitator, I was not given any recognition because I was not into violence, and that is not encouraging. And when people begin to hear the way I'm intimidated and persecuted rather than being celebrated, so it's okay, violence. Does, I mean, uh, non-violence does not pay. So let us take to violence. So that would definitely uh, make more people go into military. So even as well, the, the amnesty program was centered within the Asia uh, nationality, which is the president's uh, people. So I don't see the reason why they should still have problems, because the other people are not complaining. It's only me that was complaining. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any reason why they cannot solve their problems. Mm -hmm. Everything falls down to the uh, president. Even the man in charge of the amnesty, this uh, um, cuckoo, he said the other time that uh, when he's not the one uh, in the meeting, uh, uh, preventing me from uh, having amnesty benefit that uh, everything boils down to the president. Everything boils down to the president. If the president handles things well, he plays a fatherly role that everybody is uh, son and daughter. I mean, I don't think there will be problems. So that kind of uh, selective uh, exclusion, you understand what I mean? Economic exclusion mm. is really a problem here. All right. Um, I, I understand that we don't have a lot of time left. I want to go around each, uh, each of you and ask you, uh, looking at Nigeria, the way things are going today, what is of concern to you that is keeping you awake at night? So I, I will start with you, Nii, in Canada. Nii, what, what concerns you about Nigeria that is keeping you awake at night when you think about it? To be kind with you, um, just like Felix said, you know, my biggest concern right now is that a lot of people are beginning to see that, well, if I cannot, uh, you know, work hard and um, make a good living for myself, you know, a honest way of life for myself. It means the next thing is for me to just turn into militancy, be a militant, or turn into uh, kidnapping or all these vices. And that's the only way out, mm. you know? And very soon, it's so sad that very soon, now, of course, the, the amnesty that was being proposed in the North, I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. The Yorubas may get up and start their own very soon. The Igbos too will get up and start their own soon. So when will government, how, how far can the government really pay amnesty to every single person? Mm. You know, we can't continue this way. Yeah. All right. All right. The government uh, should learn to put us back into, into the right way of doing things. Mm. Nee, nee, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. What, what is keeping you up at night? Okay, it's just the selfishness of everybody. If you can realize this person, Doku Asari, that is busy fighting for amnesty, this this man has has private universities abroad in Benin Republic that he's managing, but he still fights for amnesty while his people, Igbo people, are nested in there at home. And he can't tell them why he's busy just fighting for his own money. And if you look at the people in the north, they are all useless people fighting for their own money. They just pack the money. It's all selfishness. Selfishness is all what is going. And the poor, they have no option only to fight for their right. And they have no way to fight for their right. When they start it, they will kill them and they say they are all Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. That's what is happening. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kali, what is keeping you up at night? Thanks for that question. Um, um, lots of things keep me up at night, but this, this particular thing worries me so much because every day I see... You know, as if we are getting close to a civil war, uh, a breakup. So this, these two, two things, you know, keep me up at night, and I keep thinking, can we get out of this? Mm. Is there any way out? So mm. that's it for me. Thank you. All right, Felix, what is keeping you up at night? Yeah, what is really keeping me up at night is um, just three issues. The first is corruption. The second is corruption, and the third and worst of all is corruption in Nigeria. 
the whole issue about militancy and everything going on is because the government is not taking responsibility of the people. The government feels that um, they are just there to like, um, you know, move around and then enrich themselves. There are so there are so much corruption going on, and that's why people like um, when when you go to places like Niger Delta, you see the level of um, corruption, even though the oil is produced in th those places. So if our government, if the government of Nigeria can take responsibility, I'm not say, just talking about uh, good luck Jonathan's um, administration. I'm talking about government in all levels. If we can take responsibility, first the duty of the government is about the people. If you can't take care of the people, then you're not supposed to be there as the government. Every other thing is secondary, it's all about the people. If I can't have work and I can't have um, security, then what are you there? Mm. So I think the whole thing should be about trying to fix Nigeria. Let's see how we can build it. Okay. Militancy came about because of how people are neglected. Mm. That's the whole thing about militancy. All right, thank so you. Let's thank you, Felix. Thank you so much. Uh, let me go to you, Samuel. What's keeping you up at night? Samuel, can you speak up, please? Yeah, I said what worries me most is the uh, prolonged economic depression of the Nigerian economy and the uh, lack of uh, political will and ideology by all successive regimes, but this one even, to, uh, 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 make, uh, to make to have an economic recovery. And uh, I believe uh, restructuring, the, restructuring the Federation for economic progress is very important. And then this, uh, this original conference has been an advent to uh, restructure things. But unfortunately, uh, my persecution will be a problem. Nothing will be able to stop. All right, all right, so Samuel. Samuel, we, we are out of time. Thank you so much. I want to thank Samuel my for friend. joining us, uh, Niyi. In, in Canada, uh, Yaya in Malaysia, Kali in Canada, Felix in Canada, and all the other people that were with us uh, during this first segment. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we have come to the end of our broadcast today. Um, we are going to now show you Keeping It Real, uh, Dr. Damages, and uh, Africa in the Diaspora. But I want to thank all our teams uh, here. We want to thank Jonathan, uh, David, Fungai, Kwesi, Mike, Sammy, Nina, Tracy, Adiola, uh, Shore, Corey, and, uh, and am I missing anybody? No. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week, the same time.